In this video, I'm doing the mid-year book freak out tag. I think that's what it's called. So my reading has been crazy the past few months because I got a new job, which I really like. I'm just super tired and overwhelmed, but the books that I have read this year, I really enjoyed. So I'll talk about that, answer some of these questions. I think there's like 13 questions. So let's get into it. Okay. So the first question is the best book you've read so far in 2022. There are a few books that surprised me that I really enjoyed. Gone to see the river man and below are two of my favorite reads of the year so far. They're both shorter reads, but they gave me everything that I wanted and needed. Gone to see the river man is about a young woman who has a relationship with a serial killer in prison. He gives her a task to go find this key and go see the river man. And she does and you find out a lot about her, her life, and how she has a lot more in common with this serial killer than you ever imagined and we find out who the river man is and it's just a dark disturbing journey. There is a bird that has decided to land right outside my window and begin chirping. It's like that episode of Rocco's Modern Life when he works all night and then he gets home in the day and there's a bird outside the window and it just goes choip 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 <laughs> The other one is Below by Laurel Hightower. This is another novella. It's centered around the Mothman myth, which I love. I love anything cryptid, stuff like that. So this is about a young woman who is just fresh out of a divorce. She's on a road trip across country and she witnesses an accident and she decides that she's going to save this stranger. But in doing so, she opens herself up to dangerous creatures that are lurking in the darkness and this takes her underground. It's very claustrophobic. It's scary, intense. It felt very much like The Descent to Me and I loved it so much. The second question is best sequel you've read so far in 2022? I do not read sequels so I didn't read any. Next question. We have new release you haven't read yet but want to. There are so many. Why are you calling me out like this? So we have Sundial by Catriona Ward. I've heard mixed things things. Like I heard that the book starts out really strong. It's about a weird mother-daughter relationship in this weird creepy town and then it becomes something else. I just got this book called Jawbone that wasn't even on my radar but it sounds really interesting. I've heard it's very disturbing and it's about a group of schoolgirls, I believe that do some weird creepy shit. I'm always into that. I also want to read Slewfoot, which is beautiful. I don't actually really know much about it. I think it's very witchy. It's from Brahm. I have so many. <laughs> There's so many books that I need to read. Next question. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I have a few. I have several. So I know in question two I said I don't read sequels, but I'm going to read Clown in a Cornfield sequel. I don't know if it's following closely to the first story or if it's following a new group of kids. I feel like it's different. A slasher like Fear Street, a new Fear Street comes out, those types of books. You can almost read them without really having to read the first one. So I'm hoping that Clown in a Cornfield will be like. Also want to read The Paul Bearers Club, by Paul Tremblay. This one sounds really weird. I have yet to read or complete a Paul Tremblay book. I tried Cabin at the End of the World, but I started it at a time where I wasn't super into reading again, so I gave up on it. So this is described as a psychological thriller. It's about friendship, chilling twist, crackling wit, blah blah blah. Can you just give me the synopsis, please? Please, somebody give me a synopsis. I don't need all this. So it's about this kid who's kind of like a loner. He's like a metalhead, it sounds like. And this cool girl, the coolest girl in school, befriends him. They started an extracurricular club for volunteer pallbearers at poorly attended funerals. That actually sounds cool. And I would totally join that club if that was a thing back when I was in high school. I would even, I would join it now. But his new friend thought the pallbearers club was cool, blah, blah, blah. She brings along her Polaroid camera to take pictures of corpses. That's not cool. I don't think that's cool. What? This just is the longest description I've ever read for a book. This sounds really interesting. It sounds very like meta and book within a book type deal. So this kid was a loner in high school. He meets this girl, become best friends. They start this Paul Bearer Club and she's weird as hell and he writes a memoir about it and she finds the memoir and decides to make edits to it. So we have Ghost Eaters by Clay McLeod Chaplin. The cover for this, first of all, is stunning. It's beautiful. It's 
haunting. It is just giving me everything that I want in a horror story. And I believe this is a story about addiction. So this tackles some heavy subjects. I believe that the character, someone in her life died of an overdose. And when this happens, her world falls apart. And then she discovers that her friend who died of an overdose had discovered a drug that allows him to see the dead. So she decides to try it out, do a seance, and then I think that basically changes her world forever. This one sounds really interesting. I love the concept behind it and it's probably gonna be sad and just very heavy which I'm into I still haven't read anything by Clay McLeod Chapman and I have a bunch of books I have two books by him that I really want to read and then I also want to read this book coming out called the honeys this is I believe it's set in a summer retreat it's a horror novel from a queer author who previously wrote horror fantasy cover is beautiful it's giving me midsummer vibes it sounds like a slasher so the next question is biggest disappointment. I will have to say that it is The Book of Cold Cases. I think this book put me into a major reading slump. I haven't been able to read as well anything really fully after attempting to read this book. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the book or if it's me, but I went into this with, with high hopes because I loved The Sundown Motel by this author. It's about a main character who's obsessed with true crime. She has a history with true crime and it's about this woman that is accused of murdering men. The concept is just right up my alley, but the book just wasn't pulling me in. I still haven't given up on it, but I've put it down because I've tried multiple times and I just can't get into it. I don't want to give up, but I have to for now, but I'm sad I didn't like it immediately. Like Sundown Motel, I blew through that so fast. I loved that book. This one I just didn't connect with and it just makes me sad. Then we have number six, The Biggest Surprise. So I surprisingly read a Riley Sager book after hating Lock Every Door. I read Home Before Dark and I really liked it. Yes, his books are very formulaic, filled with cliches and tropes, but it worked well for this book, for this story. So this centers on a woman who in her childhood, she lived in a supposedly haunted house like the Amityville Horror and her father wrote a best-selling book about their experiences. And then years later, she discovers that the father never sold the house and she goes back to try to come to terms with everything that happened. She believes it was all a hoax while her father up until his death believed it was all real. I loved that it was very much like the Amityville Horror meets the Haunting of Hill House TV show. I love that it was like a book within a book so you read from the present day of this character in the house as she's trying to renovate it and discover what happened there and then the next chapter will be pages from the father's book. It wasn't filled with so much ghosts and spooky stuff as I had anticipated but the climax there's some really creepy stuff that I remember there was a creepy moment where the father is using a Polaroid camera to see stuff and it was so well done I was like giddy and on the edge of my seat at that moment it was very intense I just really enjoyed it I had fun with it I didn't go into it expecting like super high expectations but I was pleasantly surprised I also read a book called The Laws of the Skies it's a short novella. It's about a group of kids who are taken into the woods for this camping trip and it goes horribly, horribly wrong. Kids are dying. Adults are dying. It's described as Winnie the Pooh meets Blair Witch Project. I would describe it more like Lord of the Flies. It was so dark, so disturbing, but I could not put it down. It was like looking at a car crash. You just had to find out what was going to happen. It's really shocking. It's not for everybody and it's about little kids dying, so it's not... Yeah, go, in that, go with that lightly, but I was very surprised by this book because I had never heard anything before somebody had recommended it to me and I ended up loving it. Next question, favorite new author, debut or new to you? So I would say Christopher Triana, who is the author of Gone to See the River Man. I really liked the writing style in that book and I really want to check out more from him. Next question is newest fictional crush. So I don't have any fictional book crushes, but I am currently crushing hard on Eddie Munson from Stranger Things. His character, I love everything about him. He is just a loner. He's a character that people prejudge by his appearance and by what he's into. And when you get to really get to know him, you learn that he's got this big heart, he's sweet, he's funny, and he's nothing like the monster that people imagine him to be. And I just love him so much. I love what he represents. And he's not bad on the eyes too, you know? And he plays the guitar. 
I'm sold. Eddie Munson better make it to season five. That's all I'm telling you, Duffer Brothers. Newest favorite character. So this year I read Misery from Stephen King but for the first time. I would have to say Andy Wilkes is my new favorite character. She's one of Stephen King's best characters, one of the best villains. She's probably one of the best villains, period, that I've ever read about. She's just so nuanced and she is not what you expect when you look at her on the surface. She seems like this sweet woman. Then one thing sets her off she will hobble you and just destroy your life and kill you. So I just love that she's just so unpredictable, layered. She's not just a straightforward a villain you hate. There's a lot to her and she's absolutely terrifying. Question number 10. A book that made you cry. I don't cry. I don't express emotions. I'm emotionless. I'm on antidepressants. I don't have emotions. But I do not cry at books. I wish I could. I don't think I have cried at a book before. I cry when I watch TV or movies. Like, that's different. Like, I'm hearing the music. It's getting me into it. But books? I don't think I've cried yet. I would love to. Please recommend me a book that will just destroy me. Question number 11, a book that made you happy. So I don't read a lot of happy things. All of the books I read are disturbing and filled with sad stuff, grief, loss, loneliness, all of that good stuff. Am I happy when I read these books? No. A book that made me happy while I was reading it was The Grown Up because I was just happy to read Gillian Flynn's writing again. She hasn't written anything in years since Gone Girl and I need her. I need her back and that just gave me a nice little taste of her writing again and it made me happy because it was just a fun, funny story at times and god I miss her so much. Home Before dark also made me happy because it's like it's like a fluffy read it wasn't too hard to get into it just gave me nostalgic feelings question number 12 most beautiful book you've bought so far this year oh my god so many i bought this this year it's a copy of frankenstein this cover is absolutely just gorgeous i also love the cover of you've lost a lot of blood i still haven't read this one it's bold it's disturbing it's a little scary and lastly question Question 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? How about you get off my back, okay? I have a lot. Thank you. I will link to a video I made. I think it's called the 22 horror books everyone needs to read in 2022, which is basically all the books that I want to read in 2022. I have a lot of backlist books that I want to read. I want to read The Remaking by Clay McLeod Chaplin. This is like, it sounds very Blair Witch to me. It's about a film crew who made this movie that was cursed, and then years later they try to remake it, and obviously things go wrong. I want to read A Head Full of Ghosts so badly. It's a Paul Tremblay book. It's a possession horror book. A lot of people rave about it. A lot of people say it's like really scary, but other people say it's not that scary. I just love possession horror, so I want to see how it compares to The Exorcist. Goblin, The Final Girl Support Group, My Heart is a Chainsaw. I still have so many books from last year that I haven't gotten to yet. I'm just very overwhelmed. Anyway, it was nice to do a little check-in. Let me know what books you've read so far this year that you love, that you don't love, books that you're looking forward to for the rest of the year, and thank you so much for watching, guys. I will catch you next time. Bye!